Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Coach Matt, EliteThrowsCoaching.com, coming to you today with another one of our videos. This is video number seven of our top 10 mistakes and corrections in the rotational events. That's rotational shot put and discus, and today is a big one. But before we get into it, I just wanted to let you know that our overnight throws camp is sold out. Now, it did sell out. Uh, there are 72 people uh, who are signed up and even though we have a 70 person limit two people snuck in before I was able to turn off the website and the registration form so we have 72 people who are now signed up for the throws camp we do have a wait list that is on the website so if you go to the link I'm going to put the link right up above here you can get on the wait list uh, we have had one or two people over the years that have dropped out so there might still be a chance that we can get you in. Today is a big one. It's not getting your blocking foot. Now as a right-handed thrower, that would be your left foot, not getting that down to the front of the circle quick enough. It is kind of a tough one to explain. It is kind of a tough one to show, especially tough to catch for the coaches out there. You might not notice this right away, but it is a big one and a huge reason why a lot of throwers feel like they're going slow throughout the circle and shifting weight at the end of their throw. All right, so before we get into the circle, I just wanted to show you this sort of illustration to kind of give you an idea of what I'm gonna be talking about in the circle. So, say you have two identical vehicles. The orange vehicle has a maximum speed of 100 miles per hour. The blue vehicle has a maximum speed of 100 miles per hour. So both identical cars going the identical speed, okay? One car has to go 50 miles as quickly as possible. One car has to go 100 miles as quickly as it possibly can. So if both cars have a maximum speed of 100 miles per hour, what car is going to finish the race first? So you got a little guy there, starting pistol, ready. Both cars take off at the same time. Both cars hit 100 miles an hour at the same time. Both cars are able to sustain that speed the entire time. Well, obviously the car that is going 50 miles instead of the car going 100 miles is going to finish first. So with all things being the same, if you have two identical cars, and one has a much longer racetrack, the car with the longer racetrack is going to finish last. And now we have two different cars. The first car, the orange car, still has a maximum speed of 100 miles per hour. But the blue car, the new blue car, has a maximum speed of 120 miles per hour. So they are in a race against each other. Guy comes up to the starting line with a starter's pistol. Three, two, one. Both cars take off at the same exact time. The orange car hits 100 miles per hour and is able to sustain 100 miles per hour for the entire race. The blue car hits a max speed of 120 miles per hour and is able to sustain that speed for the entire race. Who's gonna finish first? Well, obviously, if they're both going the same distance and they both start at the same time, the car that can go 20 miles per hour faster is going to finish the race first. And that's what we need to take into the discus circle right now, is we need to show you how this translates into what your throw is based on efficiency and speed. Because look, if you had this car, and say for example, this car now is racing against the same exact car, but now this car somehow can get up to 101 miles per hour. Still not gonna beat it. 102 miles per hour, still not gonna beat it. 103, 104, still not going to beat it, okay? Having a normal size racetrack with a slower car, not gonna do you too much good. Having an oversized racetrack with an identical speed car, not going to do you any good. But having a normal-sized racetrack with a fast car 
is going to make you the ultimate winner. And the same thing happens in the shot put and discus circle. And I'm gonna explain why. Okay, so the problem we are talking about today is the issue where the athlete's blocking foot is way too late getting from the back of the circle to the front of the circle. So as a right-handed thrower, this is when your left foot is coming out of the back of the circle and getting that foot from the back of the circle to the front of the circle here when you're ready to throw is taking too long and it causes just a myriad of issues. Number one, it's a very slow throw. Number two, you lose separation. Number three, you shift weight in the front of the circle. It could also cause things like right sector fouls. There are a lot of issues that happen when that left foot, as a right-handed thrower, when my left foot is late getting to the front of the throw. Now, a lot of coaches will realize this and they're going to tell their athletes to speed up. And the number one way that you can increase your speed in the circle is to get your foot from the back of the circle to the front of the circle as quickly as you possibly can. But what I'm gonna show you is kind of like when we talked about the cars, speeding up sometimes isn't always the best way of doing that. Speeding up the body isn't always the best way of speeding up the throw. Sometimes you've gotta make the racetrack a little bit shorter. Okay, so what are some ways that a throw is inefficient? What are some ways that athletes make the racetrack way too long? Well, the first way is that when their left foot, as a right-handed thrower, when my left foot comes out of the back of the circle, I swing my left foot around way too wide. Okay, so we get out of the back of the circle, we're landing in the middle of the circle, and we're getting ready to pivot and do that mirror turn, or that half turn, or the wheel drill, or whatever you call it, part of the throw. We're gonna get ready to bring this foot to the front of the circle. And what we'll do, what we see a lot of times, is that athletes will take this foot and make it too wide, and it looks like this. And they do this big, wide sweep, big, wide sweep with that back foot. So they pivot out of the back of the circle here, and they go, and that left foot swings really far around. Now it might be close to the ground, but it's just going way too wide. Again, we're making the racetrack too long. You can speed that movement up a little bit, but it's not going to get there a whole heck of a lot faster because the foot is traveling such a far distance. Okay, now what if you had a case where the athlete wasn't sweeping their foot around too wide? They were bringing their foot through in that straight line that we talk about in the mirror turn or in the wheel turn or half turn, wheel drill, whatever you guys call it out there. So what if they're not sweeping it around too wide? What if they're bringing the foot too high? This is another very common thing that happens in this part of the throw. The athlete will drive out of the back of the circle, they're in zero support, right foot touches down in the middle, and now remember, they're not gonna go around too wide, they're gonna go too high. So they take this foot and they kind of bring it up by their butt, and it looks like this where the foot kicks up in the air like they're trying to kick themselves in the butt and then it has to go all the way back down. So in this case, we're not taking a wide track all the way around. We're going kind of up a giant mountain and back down a giant mountain. Again, if you had to go, for example, 50 miles in a straight line and I had to go up a hill and down a hill along that racetrack, well, guess what's gonna happen? If I have to go up a hill and down a hill, and now my racetrack has increased another 50 miles, you're gonna get there first. So it needs to shorten the racetrack. Get rid of that mountain in the middle of your racetrack. Don't do the up and down with your blocking foot, with my left foot. Don't go up and down and don't go too wide. Instead, keep it really tight to the body and keep it really low and close to the circle. 
Now at this point, you've done two really great things to make the throw more efficient. You've done two really great things to shorten the racetrack. You know that we're no longer gonna take that big wide sweep with the left foot, and you know we're not gonna take that big high butt kick with your left foot. So now we've made the racetrack shorter. We've made the throw more efficient. Now we can speed up the car because now we've taken care of the big thing. We've taken care of efficiency, okay? We're taking care of form. Now that the form is good and the throw is efficient, now we can actually speed up the car. We can speed up the throw. So that is step three. Once you get rid of the wide sweep and once you get rid of the high butt kick, then and only then should you try to speed up the throw. And the way we do that is one of my favorite drills, which is the repeat mirror turn. Okay, we showed you this a couple of weeks ago when we talked about the athlete dropping their foot. The repeat mirror turn is fantastic as a drill to teach your athletes how to keep their foot low to the ground, how to keep their foot close and tight to the body, and how to eventually improve their balance and increase speed. So all you're gonna do is you're gonna start them out in their standing throw position, in their power position. We're gonna be up on the ball of the right foot, okay? We're gonna make sure that our athletes, number one, are not going around too wide. And we're gonna make sure that our athletes are not kicking up and down with that left foot. We're gonna tell our athletes that we want them to bring their knees together and we want to see the toe near the heel okay so the knees come together and the toe comes to the heel as we do that we are going to use the speed of our left leg coming in to help propel us around in a counterclockwise movement as a right-handed thrower we're going to go counterclockwise. It looks like this. So shot or discus doesn't matter. We're going to come around quick. Okay? And we're going to go back around quick. We're going to go back around quick, 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 quick. And we're going to quickly move around. Now, once they get the idea, they get the balance, the technique looks good, then you can try to have them do it faster and faster and faster so they get the idea of what the speed is supposed to feel like. And that is how you speed up and win the race. You don't just speed up the race car, you have to shorten the racetrack and then speed up the race car, speed up your thrower. All right, everybody, that does it for me. Thank you so much again for tuning in and checking out the videos. Again, the Overnight Throws Camp at Allegheny College is sold out, but we're going to put a link up on the screen if you want to get on that waiting list. Make sure to check out the other videos that are in this playlist to help you out as we get closer to the end of track season. And make sure to please subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell right next to it. That way you get all of our updates, not just videos like this, but you also get our Q&A videos that randomly pop up throughout the week and all of our free video analysis sessions that you can watch to learn more about the throws. So all the stuff popping up on the screen right now, make sure to give that a click. And if you have any questions, as always, leave them down below in the comment section and I will get right back to you. Thanks so much for checking out the video. Make sure to click all this stuff and I will see you next week.